الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد Allah Azza wa Jal, he says in the Qur'an, يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he creates whatsoever he wills, and he chooses to do whatsoever he wills. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has chosen for us times which he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends his favor and his blessings upon us. Times in which we as Muslims, have the opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that we would not be able to do so outside of those favorable times. And by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over us is that He has allowed us again to enter into the best 10 days of the year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored each and every one of us by allowing us to reach these days, to worship Him in these days, and to be from those who insha'Allah will be forgiven on these days. And in these 10 days, beloved brothers and sisters, there is a day which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given much virtue. And that day is the day of Arafah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Yawmi Arafah, وَيَوْمُ النَّهَرُ وَيَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ عِيدٌ لِأَهْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ That the day of Al-Nahr, meaning the day of Eid Al-Adha, the day of Arafah, and the Jum'ahs that happen throughout the year, they are days of celebration for the believers. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَهِيَ أَيَّامُ أَكْلٍ وَشُرْمٍ That they are days of celebration, and days of drinking and eating, and showing and being thankful for these days of holidays that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the believers. The day of Arafah is a day which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sworn by in the Qur'an. And as we know, beloved brothers and sisters, Allah azza wa jal, when He swears about something, that certain thing has great importance in Islam. Allah azza wa jal, He says in the Qur'an, وَشَاهِدٍ mashud. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swears by those days that are witnessed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in explaining this verse, he said, الْيَوْمُ الْمَوْعُودِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ The day which we are promised is the day of judgment. وَالْيَوْمُ الْمَشْهُودِ And the day which is going to be witnessed is the day of Al-Arafah. وَالشَّاهِدْ يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ and the other day that is a witness is the day of Al-Jum'ah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has sworn by the day of Arafah, 
showing and signifying the importance of the day of Arafah. Rather, Allah Azza wa Jal has sworn about it in two places in the Quran. Again, indicating the importance of the day of Arafah. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرِ Where He swears by the odd and the even days. The great companion Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, He said, the even day is Yawm Al-Adha, meaning the day of Eid Al-Adha. And the odd day is Yawm Arafah, which is the day of Al-Arafah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has sworn by this day multiple times in the Quran indicating its importance. So when we as Muslims hear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the day of Arafah, then we must ask ourselves how it is that we can benefit fully from the day of Arafah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, and he commanded the believers who are not performing the pilgrimage, that they should fast the day of Arafah. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الْمَاضِيَةِ وَالْبَاقِيَةِ That the day of Arafah, if you fast it, then it will wipe out the sins of the previous year and the year to come. Beloved brothers and sisters, many of us, we have not taken full advantage of this opportunity, which is fasting on the day of Arafah in the previous years. But beloved brothers and sisters, it is a day that none of us can miss because each and every one of us is in need of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, beloved brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ أَنْ يَعْتِقَ اللَّهِ That there is no day more than the day Arafah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees the slaves from the hellfire. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَدْنُوا ثُمَّ يُبَاهِ بِهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And on the day of Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He comes close to the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He boasts about His servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is boasting and showing His happiness to the angels about His servants who are worshipping Him on that day, on the day of Arafah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Allah will say, ما أراد هؤلاء What do they want? Whatever they're asking for. Whatever they want, whatever they're calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will grant and accept their dua. So this day of Arafah is a day where the people are freed from the hellfire. This day, which is the day of Arafah, is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He boasts to the angels, showing His pleasure for the believers, the one who is worshipping him on that day. So beloved brothers and sisters, which one of us is going to miss out on this great opportunity? The opportunity of forgiveness, the opportunity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being pleased with us, the opportunity of getting our sins forgiven for the previous year and the year to come. No Muslim who is seeking the hereafter, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will miss out on this great day. Likewise, beloved brothers and sisters, on this great day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He perfected and completed the religion of Islam for us. And we need to take lessons from this. For verily, anyone who doesn't understand the significance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completing this religion for us, then they only have to look at the religions that came before us, meaning from the Jews and the Christians, and see how they're always in confusion, and they do not have a text that has been completed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has been preserved for them. One time a man came to Umar ibn al-Khattab, the great companion, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, from the Yahud, and he said to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, ayatun fi kitabikum taqra'unaha. He said, Oh, the leader of the believers, there is a verse in your Qur'an that you guys recite. لَوْ عَلَيْنَا مَعْشَرَ الْيَهُودِ نَزَلَتْ لَتَّخَذْنَا ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ عِيدًا That if this verse was to be revealed upon us, meaning the Jews, then we would have taken that day as an Eid. So Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, وَأَيُّ آيَةٍ ذَلِكَ Which ayah are you speaking of? فقال, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي He said, the verse which we would have taken that day 
as a celebration, as an Eid, is the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Today I have completed this religion for you and I have perfected this blessing over you. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, like all of the companions, they were keen on knowing and understanding about the religion. And they gave it much importance. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, قَدْ عَرَفْنَا ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَالْمَكَانَ الَّذِي نَزَلَتْ فِيهِ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said, rather not only do I know when that ayah was sent down, but I know the day which it was sent down and the place which it was sent down. He said, وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ بِعَرَفَةً يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ That it was sent down upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on the day of Jum'ah and on the special day of Yom Arafah, which is a day which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed and perfected this religion. Beloved brothers and sisters, understand that this blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, that it is a blessing that no other religion has, that we have the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is complete and whole and it is a perfect religion. It does not need any increase nor does it need any decrease. It is a perfect religion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we remember it on the occasion of Yom Arafah as a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And we understand from it the importance of following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and staying away from innovating in the religion of Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al-khulafai al-rashidin al-mahdiyin. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, it is upon you to follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the righteously guided khulafa and hold on to it with your molar teeth, meaning hold on to it firmly. That be weary and be warned of innovating in the religion of Islam. For every innovation is a misguidance and every misguidance is in the hellfire. So the day of Arafah, which we will be celebrating tomorrow, is a day which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored upon this ummah. A day of forgiveness, a day of mercy, a day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He boasts about how He is proud and that He is pleased with this ummah. So it is a day that we need to give much importance to. And likewise, it is a day and a reminder of sticking to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not innovating in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah, wa nafa'ani allahu wa iyaakum lima fihi min al-ayati wal hikmah, aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru, innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen. وعلى آله وأصحابه وذريته وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد. Beloved brothers and sisters, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are too many to count. And after the blessing of Yom Arafah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us another blessing, which is the blessing of Eid al-Adha or Yom al-Nahr. The blessings are continuous from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in order, in order for us, to be continued to be blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal, then we must show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His infinite blessing and mercy upon us. And the way that we can show gratitude is by following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in these blessed days. There are many teachings, there are many mannerisms that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given and taught for the days of Eid and the days that follow the day of Eid. And it's important that every Muslim, when they're celebrating their holiday, they do it in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not want to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that after He has given us these blessings, that our response and the way we return the favor is that we do what? That we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, we should be upholding and adhering to the sunnah on these blessed days in order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can continue blessing us. And from that, beloved brothers and sisters, there are mannerisms that the Muslim should adhere to during the days of Eid, which I would like to mention a few in order that we can get the most out of the days of Eid. 
First and foremost, beloved brothers and sisters, on the day of Eid, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to beautify himself and he used to purify himself on the days of Eid. It was mentioned by Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that kana, kana yaghtasilu qabla an yaghdu lissalati fil Eidi, fil Eidaini wa fil Jum'a. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would go out to the days of Eid and on some of the days of Jum'a, he would make sure that he would go and he would take a shower. And this is from the Sunan of Eid, Eid. That we what? That we purify ourselves, we cleanse ourselves going out to this great worship, which is on the day of Eid. Likewise, it was mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the day of Fitr, he would eat before he would go out to Salat al-Eid. And on the day of Eid al-Adha, he would eat after he had slaughtered the animal, that he was sacrificing on that day for those who are going to slaughter. So it is a sunnah on the day of Eid al-Adha that if you are slaughtering, that you eat from that which you have sacrificed on the day of Eid. Likewise, beloved brothers and sisters, that on the day of Eid and before the day of Eid, that the Muslim in these 10 days till the end of the days of Ayyam al-Tashriq, that they continuously are making the takbir from the first day of the Hijjah till the third day of Ayyam al-Tashriq, that they are continuously making the takbir. And this is based on the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ That you complete the prescribed amount of days and that you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has guided you to from this religion of Islam. And it was known that Ibn Umar and Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that they would go out in the marketplaces and they كَانَا يُكَبِّرَانِ فَيُكَبِّرُوا النَّاسَ بِتَكْبِرِهِمَا that they would go out wherever they were and they would raise their voices with the takbir so that it can be a reminder for the people to raise their voices likewise to make the takbir in these special days. And this is from one of the sunan, this is from one of the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that the people have abandoned. So it is important, beloved brothers and sisters, that we raise our voices in takbir in these specific days. And this is from showing the sha'air of this deen showing our love and our adherence to this religion. And none of us should feel shy. None of us should feel shy doing it in front of Muslims or non-Muslims. Rather, we should raise the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we have been commanded. And Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, كَانَ يَظْهَرُ التَّكْبِيرُ حَتَّى يَخْرُجُ الْإِيمَانِ That Ibn Umar, he would continuously raise his voice in the takbir until the imam would come out to deliver the salah and the khutbah on the day of Eid. So it's a reminder for us, beloved brothers and sisters, to raise our voice in the takbir, and we continuously do it throughout these blessed days. Likewise, beloved brothers and sisters, from the manners of the day of Eid, that when we meet our brothers and sisters, that we congratulate them. كَانَ أَصْحَابُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا التَّقَوْ يَوْمَ الْعِيدِ يَقُولُ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضُ تَقَبَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنَّا وَمِنْكُمْ That was from the practice of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That when they would see one another on the day of Eid, they would make dua saying, May Allah accept from you and I. Why would they say this? Because these 10 days of the Hijjah are supposed to be days of worship. So just as in Ramadan, when we spent a month of trying to worship Allah, trying to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we, have, when we meet each other on the day of Eid, it is befitting that we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. So likewise in these 10 days of the Hijjah, when we meet one another on the day of Eid, following the sunnah of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we should make that similar dua, which is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. Likewise, beloved brothers and sisters, on the day of Al Eid, we should beautify ourselves without being extravagant, without doing anything that is opposing the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. For the men, when they come out to Salat Al Eid, they should not be coming out to a form of worship while they're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa taala. Likewise, the women, when they're coming out to the worship of Allah. They should not come out in disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it be in their appearance, whether it be in their clothes, 
whether it be the way they come to the masajid, the things that they do leading up to the salah and throughout the days of Eid, from those things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we're coming to the worship of Allah, we should try our best to adhere to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and staying away from all of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited from the clothes, from speech and from action. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm. Likewise, from the mannerisms of the day of Eid, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would come to Salat al-Eid, he would take one path, and then when he would leave from Salat al-Eid, he would go through another path. It was narrated that Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا كان يوم العيد خالف الطريق That on the day of Eid, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would take two different paths, one coming and one going. And this is also from the Sunan that people have abandoned. So inshallah, we would like to bring it back so that we can get the reward of adhering to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, from the things that we have been commanded to do on the day of Eid is sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our commitment and the sacrifice that we are willing to do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the embodiment of our tawheed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That everything we do is for the sake of Allah azza wa jal. Allah azza wa jal, he says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهَ Say, O oh Muhammad, that my salah, my sacrifice, my life and my death is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And I do not associate any partners with Allah azza wa jal. This is a form and a way to manifest and show the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah azza wa jal, he says, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرُ And pray to your Lord and sacrifice only for your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is important that every person who is in charge of a household, that they have the ability to sacrifice, then they should sacrifice on the day of Eid al-Adha or the three following days. And if a person who has the ability and has the wealth, but they do not do so, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ كَانَ لَهُ سِعَةً وَلَمْ يُضَحِّي فَلَا, يقرب فلا يَقْرِبَنَّ مُصَلَّانًا Whosoever has the ability to sacrifice, and they do not intend to sacrifice, then they should not come close to our musalla, meaning the musalla of Eid. This is something which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam highly recommended. And as mentioned, it is a manifestation of our sacrifice to Allah, our willingness to adhere and to surrender and submit ourselves to Allah azza wa jal with the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who are in charge of households, then it is from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we sacrifice on the day of Eid al-Adha or the three days that follow it. And this was the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala who said, أقام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر سنين يضحي That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم for 10 years after he migrated to Medina, every single year he would sacrifice on the day of Eid al-Adha. So who better to follow than the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And lastly, beloved brothers and sisters, I would like to remind myself and all of you that we live in a non-Muslim country. And we live around the non-Muslims that have celebrations every month or every, even every week. They are going out and they are celebrating and our families, our children, they are seeing this. For us, it is very important when we tell our families and our children and our wives that we should not participate in these holidays, then it is important that we give them something that can take its place. Something that inshallah, by the permission of Allah, is better for them and will be lasting in their hearts if we celebrate it in the right way. So on the days of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, it is important that we celebrate these days in a way that will be memorable for our families and our communities. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when one of the companions he seen that the female companions, they were playing and they were singing some songs on the day of Eid, and he tried to stop them, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, leave them. 
لتعلم اليهود أن في ديننا فسحة. So that the Yahud, because they were around them, he said, so that they know that there is some leniency in our religion. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, إني أرسلت بالحنيفية السمحة that I've been sent with al-hanifiyah min al-tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a religion that is easy, a religion that has leniency. So on these de- days of Eid, there's allowed the lahu al-mubah, meaning things that are encouraged to do, which are things that the people will enjoy on the days of Eid. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala, when he was explaining this hadith, he said, مَشْرُوعِيَّةِ التَّوَسُّعِ عَلَى الْعِيَالِ فِي أَيَّامِ الْأَعْيَادِ بِأَنْوَاعِ مَا يَحْصُلْ لَهُمْ مِنْ بَسْقُ النَّفْسِ That he said when explaining this hadith, that it shows the legislation and that it is allowed to do things extra on these days that brings about the happiness and the relaxation of the children. وَأَنَّ إِظْهَارَ السُّرُورِ فِي الْأَعْيَادِ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ الدِّينِ And that showing our happiness on the days of Eid are from the manifestation of our religion. There are many people, and we say that this is a very big mistake that on the day of Eid, they do not give it the importance that it should be given. They do not give it the importance and making it a day of happiness and fun for their families and a memorable day for them. But beloved brothers and sisters, if you do not give importance to our holidays, then our families, our children, our communities, they will look to the holidays of the non-Muslims so beloved brothers and sisters, advice for myself and all of you, make the days of Eid special for verily the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was sent bil hanifiyyat samha a religion which is easy and lenient and rather the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he encouraged to make the days of Eid special. Allah wa sallu wa sallimu ala man amrakum Allah bil salati wa salami alayhi fa qala azza min qailin alima inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله